More now from my exclusive interview with President Trump's niece, author of the new memoir, Too Much and Never Enough, uh, How My Family Created the World's Most Dangerous Man. Mary Trump had to fight in court for the right to publish her portrait of what she calls a malignantly dysfunctional family. The patriarch, President Trump's extremely wealthy father, Fred. It all begins with your grandfather. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You say he's a sociopath? Yes. What do you mean by that? He had no empathy. He was incredibly driven in a way that turned other people, including his children, his wife, into pawns to be used to his own ends. If somebody could be of service to him, then he would use them. If they couldn't be, he excised them. And in my father's case, tragically, uh, he was not abused. You write, Donald following the lead of my grandfather and with the complicity, silence, and inaction of his siblings destroyed my father. Yeah, that was hard to write. Uh, much harder to witness. You say that was a hard sentence to write. I left out the next sentence. Okay. I can't let him destroy my country. Ah, uh, yes. That sounds uh, pretty arrogant. So let me explain what I mean. I feel, as I write in the book, that there are so many parallels between the circumstances in which my family operated and in which this country is now operating. I saw firsthand what focusing on the wrong things, elevating the wrong people can do, the collateral damage that can be created by allowing somebody to, to live their lives without account, accountability. If I can do anything to change the narrative and to tell the truth, I need to do that because I don't believe the American people had the entire truth four years ago. Why didn't you write the book four years ago? I thought long and hard about saying something. I knew that if I had said anything, I would have been painted as a disgruntled, disinherited niece who just wanted her 15 minutes, which obviously is still being said about me now. That's exactly what the White House says. They say it's a book of falsehoods that you're writing out of financial self-interest. Basically, you're lying for money. If I had wanted money or revenge, I would have done this 10 years ago when it was infinitely safer, but neither one of those things interested me. You, you do write that he, he once had a spark of kindness. Yeah. I think he did. One of the unforgivable things my grandfather did to Donald was he severely restricted the range of human emotion that was accessible to him, which makes it incredibly... What does that mean? It means that certain feelings were not allowed. Like? Sadness the impulse to be kind, the impulse to be generous, those things that my grandfather found superfluous, unmanly. Your father got very ill, deathly ill, and you get a phone call from your grandfather. I remember that conversation verbatim. My grandfather got on the phone. He said, your dad's sick. I'm like, oh, is it serious? Oh, he's in the hospital, but it's not serious. Okay, um, but you know why? Why am I calling you at ten o'clock on a Saturday night if it's not serious? I was thinking to myself. So I said, "Well, is it his heart?" Because he had had open heart surgery uh, three years earlier at the age of thirty-nine, and he said, "Yes, it's his heart." And I said, "Well, then it is serious. Yes, it's serious, but don't worry about it. Call your mother in the morning." And as I found out two minutes later, when I called my mother to find out what was going on, my father had died two hours earlier. More or less alone. Completely alone. Obviously with strangers surrounding him, but no family. You write that his brother went to the movies? Yes. 
Yeah, I, that shocked even me when I heard about it. You know, it was bad enough. It was probably worse, honestly, that my dad's parents just sat in the, the library in the house waiting for a phone call. I will never know why they didn't go to the hospital to be with their son who was clearly dying. So maybe it isn't surprising that Donald didn't think he needed to be there. Maybe that would have looked bad to his father. And maybe sitting around waiting for the phone call was too burdensome. I don't know. But, you know, I've often wondered what movie did he go to see that seemed more compelling than sitting with his dying brother. But I'll never know. For many years after your father died, you were taken care of by the yeah. Trump family. Mm -hmm. Then Fred Trump dies, and you have the impasse. Yeah. Um, I just want to clarify something. You say taken care of. The sense in which that's true is no different from the sense in which it's true for anybody else in my family. When it was all settled, when the lawsuit was done, did you think it was a fair settlement? No, um, but I didn't have enough information to understand in what way it wasn't fair. And at the time, again, it's a very long time ago, and I was very close with my grandmother. So a lot of it for me was wrapped up in the quite honestly, devastation I felt when she let us go so easily because of money. So that was much more important to me than the other side of it. And it certainly made the, the dealing with the, you know, the money issues harder because... But it was all about the money, wasn't it? I'm a Trump, you know? I. I Everything's about money in this family. But I'm also different from them. And for me, what I understood, and one of the reasons it was so devastating, was that money stood in for everything else. It was literally the only currency the family trafficked in. Your brother's not happy with the book. I believe that my brother is entitled to his privacy and his opinion, and I am completely supportive of whatever relationship he has with my family and whatever choices he makes. This is a hard question, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. Is, is, is writing the book an extension of the dysfunction of the family? Um, probably. Uh, you know, I didn't write it as a form of therapy or um, anything like that. Uh, in fact, I would have preferred not to write it. It was quite difficult. And I sometimes feel I would have been better off not knowing some of the things I now know. She packed a lot into the book, and we're going to have a lot more tomorrow with Mary Trump. All right, she certainly has a lot to say, George. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.